Hello everyone, it's me, Henry Boxdell. Welcome to my channel, Troubleshooting with Henry. Are you ready for your close-up? I just had to do that. Okay, joke done. Today's guest is Derek Price. Derek is a film and TV producer, director, and editor who volunteers as the technical director at the Digi 60 Filmmakers Festival. Derek has won multiple awards for co-producing, directing, and editing Primary Colors, which screened at 32 film festivals worldwide. Recently, Derek joined Ross Video as their show content producer, and he's a member of Obscura Creative, a collective of film and TV professionals committed to local grassroots productions in the Ottawa region. Hi, Derek, and welcome to Troubleshooting with Henry, the interviews. I've got 10 questions for you. Are you ready to get started? Hi, Henry. Yeah, absolutely. I'm ready. Thanks for having me. First question. When you were a kid, what did you want to do as a grown up? When I was a kid, I, I didn't really know what I wanted to be. I kind of was all over the place. I dabbled in sports, dabbled in, uh, you know, pretty much anything I could do. I mean, as a kid, I was very interested in everything. So um, one thing, though, that kind of drew my mind was into uh, music. Uh, my My older brother had given me some music and sort of changed my path in terms of that it was at a very young age and uh, um, I guess eventually I settled on wanting to be an artist I think that that's what it came down to I just wanted to do things that were fun I was I started playing music myself I was always into sketching and writing and um, I guess I guess that's where I wanted to go although to be honest I really had no clue I wasn't looking at that way I was just I was just having a good time what is your career now like you said in the intro, I'm a film and TV producer, director, and editor, uh, responsible also for doing like video stuff. So uh, right now I, I dabble with uh, helping some, some festivals in town, specifically Digi60 Filmmakers Festival. I'm their technical uh, director. And now mostly for what I do for paid work, uh, I have a full-time job with Ross Video as their show content producer. That's brand new for me and very exciting. Get to work with technology and uh, really push the boundaries of what I know and uh, you know, uh, make some really fun and interesting content for them, uh, as well as working uh, for Obscure Creative, uh, which is a collective of film and TV professionals that I run with my, uh, my partners. And it's, uh, it's just a lot of fun for us to make local companies, uh, small businesses, and artists. I help them try to make video content for, uh, for themselves so they can get out there and, and represent themselves well. What do you do with... Um obscure creative like what type of things do you do with obscure creative i'm i mostly focus on directing and editing um we do documentaries uh lifestyle content so for example right over here over my shoulder you can see a poster for versus women in combat sports that was a series that we made a documentary series where we followed um you know women combat sports are uh, amateur martial artists in in ottawa uh and actually you had one of them on your show joe mazenev um, and I know you know Amy Reed as well. She, she was also a participant in the documentary series that we made. And that's one of the things we do. Um, and then we're, we also made like, we make cooking shows. Uh, we make kind of, kind of everything, uh, artistic profiles on artists, um, small business videos, um, you know, things that help support small businesses and help support not necessarily people that have huge budgets, but still need video to help communicate, you know, who they are and just, uh, really trying to find a way to support those ways. So that's what Obscure Creative is all about, is about supporting the, uh, you know, small small businesses, small people, and, and trying to make it a, a great videos so that they can, they can feel connected to their audience. Well, that's awesome. <laughs> What's the worst job you've ever had, and why was it so bad? I would say that I've never had, like, a worse job or, like, a bad job necessarily. Um, I mean, I've done some work that I've not necessarily enjoyed, but I don't think it was necessarily bad because in the end it actually taught something about myself. So 
specifically I'm referring to some call center work that I had done. Uh, I did some while I was in Ottawa. I did some while I lived in Montreal. And uh, that is that is hard work, I would say. And it's uh, it definitely the kind of thing that I don't, I don't necessarily want to do, but uh, I appreciate the, the work that goes into it. And I feel like I learned a lot about myself. You know, you have to do what you have to do as an artist, as, a, as somebody who works in this industry, you have to be able to, to, you know, find ways to get paid in a way. This was a, that kind of scenario. I, I needed, I needed a job. And, uh, but I, again, it taught me about myself. I, I learned some really great stuff about who I am and what I need to do. And, really pushed me to be further on that path because uh, at those points I hadn't made the commitment to being, you know, an artist or being like a director or working in video full time. I was still trying to find jobs and doing weekend warrior filmmaking and, and uh, you know, just making short films whenever I could. So it was those, those jobs that really showed me like, okay, the, you need to focus on what you need to do to drive yourself to, you know, switch your career and get into a really great headspace so that you can you can move on to something that you really want to do and feel passionate about and that's that's what I felt every day I walked into that building to do the work at the call center it was it hurt in a way it was it just wasn't the right thing for me and you can you know that you know that as you're doing the work you can feel it when something doesn't feel right and uh, that's that's how I felt it showed me what I needed to do and and sort of what I needed to avoid whenever I was trying to figure out what I was going to do with my life. Did you go to college or university? And if so, what did you study there? It's kind of a funny story. Um, I went to college a few times, uh, but I didn't really find anything that suited me. So I, I think I started college three times and I did probably half a semester or, or three quarters of a semester or one semester in three different programs. But I, I didn't really find what, uh, what worked. And again, kind of going back to the last, uh, the last question about the worst job, like I just, I, I think I learned that sitting down in a classroom wasn't really worked for me in terms of like how I learn. I'm a very hands-on practical visual person. And, and also I, I was taking courses that didn't really appeal to me in some sense. Like they were, they were interesting in a way, but they didn't really speak to what it is that I felt like I really wanted to do. They didn't, again, taught me very much like, okay, you don't, you don't like this thing. You should probably try something else. So um, I feel, I feel like that my life has just been that thing where it's been, you know, uh, try, I like to try a lot of different things. I like to learn a lot of different things. And then I find what works, what doesn't work. And then, you know, um, sort of pursue the things that really make me happy. And, um, you know, I'm a self-starter. I learn better at my own pace. Uh, and by doing it. So uh, really, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't finish any college, which is, you know, not necessarily a bad thing. And I'm sure there are ways to get into the film industry, like obviously through going to film school and things like that. For me, it just didn't, it didn't happen that way. Uh, what it took was me buying a camera and, uh, you know, betting on myself. But yeah, school, school, school and I were never really cool. Um, you know, we, we never high-fived or anything like that. It was more of a subtle little nod in the hallway. And uh, I think we were good with each other. I can understand what that must have been like. The whole uh, a slight nod and move on. That's it. Like two shifts passing in the night. Don't really need to talk. They just know they might not be the right, the right thing for each other. What got you interested in the job that you have now? I think the, the thing that really pulled me into the film and television realm and that whole side of it was really um, a combination of everything that I've kind of been working on, which was, like I said earlier, uh, you know, I was, I was uh, uh, working as an artist, like trying to work as an artist or trying to figure out what I was trying to do. Uh, but I loved and pa was passionate about, you know, sketching, writing, photography, music, and that's what film is. It's a combination of all those things put together um, as like a cumulative art of all those of all those pieces. And I think that that's what drew me to it. I, you know, I kind of fell into the industry a little bit. Like I, I it was definitely something I worked towards and wanted to to do. But what what actually turned me to it was a friend of mine, Martin, from many many years ago, uh, was making a film himself, and he was just like, "Hey, I need someone to hold the camera." And I was like, "I've never held a camera before. Let's do this." let's try this out. I've never used video. Like I, I grew up in a very small town and we had no video cameras, but we had a lot of hockey sticks. Um, you know, mm -hmm. so it was, it was, it was definitely a different thing. Like we, um, 
I think that I think that overall, though, what what mostly got me interested in doing it was that combination was that that uh, bringing together of all those different disciplines. You know, you're storyboarding, you're writing a script, you're you know, you're looking for music, you're making music to be in your films. And I think what keeps me wanting to do film and television is is the focus that I have now, which is more on documentary and lifestyle productions. It, it allows me to connect with real people. Documentary is really close to my heart. And I think that that's what, you know, keeps me interested in what I'm working on. And in, in terms of my work with Ross video, uh, it's the technology and the people. Like, again, it's, it's this idea that I get to play with robots and robot cameras and uh, really push the limits on that sort of side and my knowledge of that stuff and learn new things. I think that that's like the it's a really, it's a really cool thing, and I feel like I'm, I'm lucky to be where I am today, and um, I really appreciate like the hard work that I, you know, I, I understand the hard work I had to put in, and I appreciate everyone who supported me to get me where I am today. So I appreciate that. Well, that's excellent. What do you find most uh, challenging about your job? You know, I would say probably one of the toughest things. Uh, about the creative process is the creative process. I mean, writer's block is real and trying to find funding for things like documentaries and you're basically trying to sell people uh, to invest in you, invest in your story uh, and try and get them to buy into that. I think that that's, that's always a struggle. I, I think that that's mostly the, the tough thing about it. And whenever, before I was, before I had this full-time job with Ross Video, um, being, I was a freelancer for a decade at least. Um, you know, working, working gig to gig, uh, which is a very real thing. The gig economy is real. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just one of those things where you have to, you're working so hard uh, for those, for those jobs and you're, and you're vying for those jobs that you're trying to, trying to get someone to notice you to, to see the vision that you have to help them with their, with your project. So I think that that's probably the most challenging thing is, um, you know, when you're a freelancer, it's tough to uh to make that work and uh and otherwise it's trying to get that creativity flowing and keeping it you know keeping it uh executing at a high level i mean it's it's not unlike being a you know an athlete where you have to constantly be at your best you have to you have to work your mind you have to work all your creative skills so that you can become better and and make things that are really fun and challenging and entertaining and uh you know educational even like i, I like to say that i do ed edutainment which is like, I love to do entertainment that educates at the same time. So um, yeah, I think that that's, that's always a challenge trying to meld those things together so they work all in, in harmony. It's the best feeling in my opinion, if you can find something that doesn't seem like work or that you're doing chores, but you actually feel good about it. Absolutely. Can you give me an example of a time you had to troubleshoot an issue with your job or your personal life and the solution you came up with? So uh, I, I've got a couple <laughs> uh, that could that could work for this. I mean, working working in film and television, you know, there's there are you know cats to herd, there are <laughs> uh, there are fires to put out. There's it's. Uh, <laughs> always, always and forever is it a thing to to try and make, you know, that requires troubleshooting. It feels like as a producer, that is what your job is, is to <laughs> is to troubleshoot absolutely everything and make it work. Uh, more specifically, I can say like we had we had a project that we that I was helping with the video side on and uh, we had planned to shoot it in the middle of Dow's Lake on a raft. And uh, Unfortunately, the due to circumstances outside of our control, we couldn't we couldn't get the thing to work properly. So we, uh, you know, a, a week out from the this event, we had to think on the fly, and we ended up shooting. Uh, we ended up like filming the the the, the whole video um, on land. Unfortunately, didn't didn't quite wasn't quite the same as what we were hoping to do with the video, but. Uh, uh, that's like just a scenario you have to, you know, you know, there's a bunch of things you have to think about. There's permits, there's permissions, there's a, availability. Um, you know, I have a music video that I'm about to film very soon that has nine members in the band. Try coordinating those, uh, those schedules, you know, um, you know, similar, similarly thinking about the, uh, you know, when we made versus, uh, versus women in combat sports, we were doing, we were scheduling uh, 12 women to try and, you know, film their personal lives film uh you know them in the ring 
film them at the gym. It's just a lot. It's just a lot of stuff. So scheduling is like a big thing. Um, and, uh, you know, another, another one was obviously with the pandemic. Uh, you know, we were in the middle of filming uh, season two of Versus when the pandemic hit and uh, everything shut down, you know, live events. So we, we, had, we had certain uh, combat sport events that got canceled on us that we weren't going to be able to go, you know, watch our fighters compete. And uh, so, you know, you lose that sort of part of the, of the show. You lose that, that segment, which is, you know, often what draws people in at first is the martial arts. And then they get to know the person through the, through the story. And uh, those, are, those are the kind of things you just have to troubleshoot. I mean, for producers... They, they're, they're problem solvers. That's, that's basically what your job is. And uh, uh, I mean, I love it and it's, and it's weird, uh, but I love it. <laughs> what do you find most rewarding about your career? The most rewarding thing about my career would be that I get to smile a lot, um, <laughs> that I'm happy with what I do and uh, that I enjoy it. Like, you know, I had to go through a lot of different career like careers like this film and television is technically I guess like my third career but um, you know I just kept switching what I wanted to do until I found the right thing but I I think that would goes part and parcel with who I am about like not settling for just doing a job because it's a job and uh, you know instead trying to find something that would make me happy and I'm like I said before I'm very lucky to be able to be in that position where I was able to do that and the other thing that probably is the most rewarding is the connections I get to make and uh, specifically working in documentary and, and uh, lifestyle and, and now with my full-time job it's there's I just like talking to people and getting to know them and know their story and if there's a way for me to help tell their story in a way that is you know fun and, and educational in a way um, like those are the things like documentary has this like necessity for you to connect deeply very quickly with people when you make a documentary you know some people have the luxuries to make documentaries for years uh, because that's how the story has to come together with the shows that I've been involved with. They've all been very quick. Like we have a two week window for me to know someone extremely intimately and learn their story and understand them so that I can help translate into a story for a show. So um, I think that that's, that's something I find rewarding is the path that I'm able to do that. I'm able to meet people and get to know them very quickly, um, you know, sometimes deeply and, and, uh, and that and that feels that feels great. Like that's extremely rewarding to me. Well, I can see why that can be so rewarding. I would feel the same in that same situation. It's very it touches you deeply, right? Like it's one of those things when people open up to you and want to share their experiences with you. It's sometimes it can be difficult to start, and they're very apprehensive, and then they're not sure like how much of myself I want to expose and show because it's not just to me in the end, they're telling the story so that we can tell it to an audience. And, uh, you know, it's uh, part of what I enjoy about the process is getting to know the people and assuring, assuring them, like, you know, then nothing is nefarious. Like, we just want to learn what your story is. And if it's, if it's something that, you know, could be helpful to other people, could be, you know, and, and in more lighthearted ways, entertaining, then that's that's the way we that's the way you know I like to approach it and the way we like to approach it as part of obscure creative for sure. What do you do for fun? Well, as a freelancer, I uh, for fun I made videos, <laughs> and then I also worked and made videos. I think that outside of that now, probably my biggest passion has become become cooking. In the past few years, I worked on some really great shows and met some really great chefs, and uh, they've inspired me to want to expand what I'm doing in terms of how we cook. Cooking is a passionate thing. It's a, again, another, it feels like another piece, another, in, another pen that's dropped into the, uh, you know, into the, to my artist box that I can use that I, it's like cooking is another art. Well, that's fantastic. If someone was visiting the city where you live, what would you recommend they see? Ottawa has some really beautiful nature, I would say is like probably one of the biggest things. I mean, the canal and um, Arboretum and and the I mean we have a farm in the middle of our city I mean that never hurts um, but uh, I think that what I would want people to check out if you have never been to Ottawa come and check out the amazing local festivals um, that are small uh, that are you know are growing and and you know because Blues Fest is great uh, but if you've never been to House of Paint go go check out House of Paint it's a wonderful festival um, I mean uh, I'll be a little bit 
self-promotional, but Digi60 is, you know, a grassroots festival where we focus on filmmakers as, as opposed to the films. Uh, we really want to, we really want to make, you know, an, have, a, make an opportunity for, for filmmakers to start a career in film and television and not, and not just, you know, weekend warrior it up a little bit and make and make films on weekends uh, but instead try to if this is something they're passionate about we want to try and offer that opportunity for them to expand that side of it um and and finally i would say probably my favorite event that happens in the city is art of war which is a muay thai event a combat sport event that takes place at the war museum you know at the end of february every year i would say that that's one of the biggest and most unique events that you know, that I get to attend, uh, that I love to attend. And it, it's just really well run and, and a beautiful a beautiful event, to be honest. Well, that's excellent that you're uh, making all these recommendations. Oh, well, thank you for being on my show. Thank you, Henry. I really appreciate it. Thank you for listening to me uh, yammer on about myself. Uh, I look forward to uh, more episodes as you, uh, as you make them. It's really wonderful to see how you've been able to build this. When Derek was a child, he didn't really know what he wanted to do. He was interested in a lot of different things. So he tried a lot of different things. Drawing, storyboarding, music, writing. Then a friend asked if he could hold his camera and that changed everything. As Derek said, He's very much a hands-on, practical learner. He, in university, had just a passing acquaintance. By betting on himself, picking up a camera, and pursuing an interest, Derek found his passion and created a career for himself. Most important of all, Derek said he wanted to do something that made him happy by giving himself permission to explore, to try new things, and to learn by doing. Derek has done exactly that. Pretty cool. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe below. And as always, special thanks to Johnny Flynn for giving us permission to use his beautiful music. Happy travels. He's waiting for you.